Hey guys, it's Emmanuel here and in this video I'm going to be talking about the RSI divergence strategy. Um, while making this video, I'm going to make some assumptions that you know what a candlestick is, that you're familiar enough with your uh, platform to know how to plot the indicators on your chart, that you know what a trend is as opposed to a range in market, and that you can follow uh, a simple set of rules, which I'm very sure that you can. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So the very first thing you want to keep in mind um, is that this is a uh, sort of like a counter trend strategy, meaning you're literally taking um, trades against the trend. And um, immediately alarm bells should be going off um, warning you that this is not a strategy that you can use at any random location on your chart. Uh, you have to be very specific in terms of the location you choose to get involved in the market. Perhaps what most people don't understand is the RSI divergence as it's uh, usually taught is an entry method. And the last thing you want to be doing um, is taking a trade or entering a trade against a strong trend again and again. That's got to be a very quick way of losing all your trading capital. There has to be a very good reason as to why you've chosen uh, to take the trade after seeing the setup on your charts. I'll go further into details with this in a second. So in terms of the market state component of this strategy, uh, we are looking for the market to be in a trending environment and should have been uh, for quite a while. Uh, so remember, this strategy is used to predict the end of a trend and the turning point in the market. Uh, so it's critical for you uh, to use it after the market have been trending for quite a while. We do not use this strategy in a range bound market, neither should you be using it at the first uh, sign of a trend. You want to wait till you feel like the trend is overextended and these are things we'll go over in this video. For those who don't know what the RSI divergence is, it's simply when the RSI indicator, the relative strength index indicator, uh, diverges from the price action on your chart. Another word for divergence can be uh, separation or parting, dividing. Uh, so basically doing uh, opposite or going in a different direction altogether to what your price action is doing. So let's take a quick look at the chart to see exactly what we're talking about. We've got a pretty good example right here with the market in a pretty uh, good looking trend. Uh, pulls back, tries to continue, traded above the previous high uh, only by a little bit in this particular um, instance. Um, but on here, looking at the peaks on the indicator, we see the indicator putting in a lower high uh, at this peak. Um, I think I'll use the crosshairs to try to show you exactly the point. Uh, so right at this high, we've got a high on the indicator as well. On the next high, the indicator puts in a lower high. At this point, we can say uh, price is diverging in the sense that they are separating or parting from each other. Uh, so let's zoom in further um, and discuss some of the specifics of what constitutes a divergence. So what I'm going to do is make this rule based to make it as systematic as possible for the sake of simplicity. If at any point you can't answer these questions with conviction, then I suggest you leave the trade alone and look for another opportunity. You never risk your money or invest in anything you are not sure about. Right, so rule number one, do you see a trend? And does that trend have at least two higher highs? In this particular setup, we can clearly see that the market is trending higher. And for the second part of the question, we've got at least two higher highs. In this case, we had three before the market topped out and gave us the divergence. Rule number two, as price pushes higher past the previous high, has the RSI made a lower high? Now what most people will instantly want clarification for is whether I'm referring to the candle wick trading above the previous high or can it close and trade higher um, with several candles and still count as a divergence. And the answer to that is Yes, it can close and trade with a couple more candles going higher as long as the divergence continues on the indicator. And I'll look for some examples on the chart 
to show you this later on. This next rule addresses my earlier point uh, about not taking a setup just randomly with this strategy. You'd have to have a good reason to be taking a trade at a great location on your chart. So the next rule is, is price at a good support and resistance level. And the quick and easy way to do that is to find out what price is reacting to at this previous high and why price could be trading past it with less relative strength giving you a clue that this move above could be a fake, a stop run, manipulation or a short term move before turning around. So now we simply zoom out and see exactly what price is reacting to. And there, we can start to see how price is held as support and then reacted to as resistance. Moving on to the last rule, which clarifies our entries. And there are two types of entries that I would like to share with you uh, today. And the first one is, do you have a reversal candle or reversal candle pattern at the second peak forming the divergence? If your answer is yes, then you can feel free to take the trade with stop loss above the high with some extra room for buffer. However, it's important to keep in mind that this is the aggressive form of entry which maximizes your reward against your risk, but is also the riskier of the two entries. The second entry is waiting for price to break and close below the 20 simple moving average, taking the trade with stops again above the high with some extra room for buffer. As you can clearly see, you'd be taking a lot more risk in terms of pips. However, it is the safer entry to take. And as promised, here's an example of a setup with price breaking and closing above uh, the previous high uh, with a couple of candles before you get your candlestick reversal signals um, before price ended up going lower. Now let's follow the rules one by one and see if we get a valid entry as we have previously covered. So remember, rule number one is the market trending. And as you can see, we've got an uptrend with at least two higher highs. Rule number two, as the price pushes higher and trades above the previous high, do we have a lower high on the RSI indicator? Number three, is price at a support and resistance location? So let's check. And there we go. We've got price using this particular level as a resistance. And if we go further back, we see it using it as support. And finally, do we have our entry confirmation? The first entry is a reversal candlestick confirmation, which we have right here on this candle. And the second is right here as price closes below the 20 simple moving average. And here's a couple of examples of what a bullish divergence looks like. And clearly we can see we are in a downtrend. And as the market trades below the previous low giving us a lower low, the RSI is turning upwards giving us higher lows. Is this a good support and resistance location? We zoom out, scroll to the left to find out. And as you can see, price responding to that particular location and finally our entries good entry confirmations right here and when price breaks above the 20 simple moving average and that's it from me take care